Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. I hope everyone has a great time. Um, today, I do a first lightning talk about connecting Kubernetes clusters on the edge using Cilium Cluster Mesh. And the agenda for today is starting with an introduction about Cilium and eBPF to understand how it works and how Cilium uses it to um, publish services across clusters or to have identity-based security across clusters using Cluster Mesh. And then I want to do an overview and deep dive on Cluster Mesh use cases. And I'll talk a little bit about how, for example, Cluster Mesh can be used on the edge to support edge workloads in a design or topology uh, which extends clusters across multiple Kubernetes clusters. My name is Raymond de Jong. I'm a solution architect working at Isovalent, the company behind Cilium. So let's start with eBPF. What's eBPF? It stands for Extended Berkeley Packet Filter. That doesn't tell you a lot. What it basically is, it provides technology software for having a base sandbox virtual machine to run custom code in your kernel based on events without actually updating or changing the kernel. What it means is that if you have a recent enough kernel, you can leverage eBPF to do a number of things based on events. So like I said, eBPF runs custom code in the kernel based on events. So it has a user space and a, and a kernel space. Um, so when an event, for example, a packet arises, it arrives at the network interface, an EBP pro, eBPF program can be triggered on that event and do custom code or logic with it. So it runs eBPF programs on events, and today we're talking about networking. So what that means is that every time a process connects or TCP retransmit happens or a packet leaves or arrives at the network interface, Cilium with eBPF can do things with it and inspect that traffic to provide rich observability or to provide services across clusters. Now, Cilium is obviously software for providing connectivity across Kubernetes clusters, and it provides security, connectivity, services, uh, and observability for your container workloads. And it uses eBPF technology under the hood, and it abstracts eBPF for you as, a, as an engineer interacting with the Kubernetes cluster. So you don't have to know eBPF or program eBPF. It just leverages eBPF under the hood to provide network connectivity or rich observability. So a number of things we are currently doing with Cilium uh, uh, and especially Cluster Mesh. So we provide network policies, identity aware network policies across clusters. So we can see identity from other clusters and secure that kind of workloads based on their metadata, so their labels. Providing services and load balancing. And in terms of Cluster Mesh, it means that we can provide services across clusters. Bandwidth management, flow policy logging, and operation, operational and security metrics. So also we use Hubble as a component which talks to the Cilium agent to inspect and show traffic um, leaving and arriving your workloads. So in terms of cluster mesh, you can use Cilium for availability, security, and manageability use cases. First of all, you can run services across your Kubernetes clusters. Um, so you can connect on-prem or on in the cloud or a hybrid kind of combination of clusters using Cilium Cluster Mesh. And you can have global services defined, which are may basically make a service and their endpoints available across clusters. But you can also do centralized services kind of topologies, which I will show a bit later. And while you're doing so, you can also enforce security using Cilium network policies. So like I said, each set of unique labels from a pod creates an identity, a unique identity. And using Cilium, you can create Cilium network policies or cluster network policies to enforce that security across your clusters. And then finally, manageability using Hubble. We can provide visibility for the workloads across your clusters. So you can inspect traffic uh, across your clusters. So uh, for example, when a, a, a given pod in a given cluster reaches another endpoint in another cluster, you can inspect the traffic and Hubble UI ha understands where it comes from and which identity it has. So let's 
talk about, let's dive a bit deeper on, on cluster mesh use cases. So first use case is obviously the high availability use case, where you have one or where you have two or more clusters connected with Cilium cluster mesh. How it works is that in each cluster you will create a namespace and you create a surface. And then you annotate a service with a global uh, Cilium IO global service to enable it to be available across clusters. And what happens using eBPF is that obviously Cilium understands endpoints in each cluster, and it will advertise those endpoints across clusters. So in each cluster, you will see endpoints from both clusters being available. That means that, for example, if you have pods in some kind of cluster which has a misconfiguration or being redeployed or there's something wrong with that, actually the service can fail over connectivity to the other cluster. Um, another use case is shared services, which means that you basically want to abstract centrally configured service in a given cluster and have, you know, smaller clusters across, uh, for example, on the edge. So what this means is that you, you most likely have things like DNS or logging or some kind of storage where you need to find, uh, configure and store the state of your workloads in a shared services cluster. And you don't necessarily want those to manage them in your edge clusters, in other clusters, because you want to be flexible in the life cycle of those clusters, or you want to keep those clusters as small and as agile as possible. So what you can do then is just you just expose that service in the front end clusters and then have a shared service in a single shared service cluster. So each front end in this example will uh, connect, for example, to a vault service in their own cluster and get redirected and connected to the shared services cluster. And um, this also works very well for providing segmentation, for example, between tenants or um, separation between security levels. So, for example, if you're high, high secure, you don't want to expose necessarily in that cluster um, that given uh, a services workload. And then finally, a very useful use case, I believe, for edge clusters is splitting services. And this is about creating stateless versus stateful clusters. So, um, Obviously, on Edge and, all, and on some Kubernetes, other topologies as well, is stateless clusters creates the uh, option to have more flexible workloads on the front end. Um, also, better performing because you're not storing state on the front end. You want low latency, quick response. But if you need to store or consult data stores in another cluster, you can create a stateful cluster, expose that service across your front end clusters and make that connectivity uh, available. It also makes it easier to lifecycle your front-end edge clusters and just maintain a single stateful cluster, uh, which obviously needs more uh, configuration and care in terms of making that available. So if you want to know more about Cilium Cluster Mesh, um, I recommend to go to Cilium.io and learn. Um, there's a lot of documentation on the Cilium.io website to get started with Cluster Mesh. It has a lot of examples to create a, 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 a service, a global service, and to show how it will fall over across a cluster. Um, what's also coming is that we're close to releasing a feature that you can have an affinity. So, for example, you want only the local endpoint to respond when it's available. And when the local endpoints are not available, it will fill over to another cluster. Or the option to only expose remote uh, endpoints, which makes sure that when, when a front end is hitting a surface, it will get redirected to another cluster and have the workloads running there. This also gives a lot of flexibility if you do some kind of maintenance in a specific cluster to have that service redirecting traffic to another cluster. There are also weekly interactive Cilium introduction and live Q&As with uh, Thomas Graf, our Cilium co-creator. And we have also install fest if you get started with Cilium, where some of us is walking you through installing Cilium on a kind-based setup, for example. Um, that's what I had for today. We also have Slack, GitHub, websites, and obviously Twitter to follow and to know more about Cilium. 
If you have specific questions about Cilium cluster mesh, I will be outside and please ask me. Uh, I'm happy to help. We also have a Cilium booth in the, uh, in the expo starting tomorrow. So myself and other contributors of Cilium will be there to uh, answer any questions. Um, thank you for spending time with me and uh, there will be another tech talk uh, right after this. So thank you very much.